Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, I'm the theme park evangelist, and I wanted to talk to you guys about my uh, passion for uh, reaching out to the unsaved, um, and uh, one of the ways that I did that, or one of the several ways that I have done that in the past, was through a program called Faith Evangelism. Faith Evangelism is a program that Calvary Baptist Church in Leonard Haven, Florida on Overlook Drive still does to this day. Twelve years after I've taken the program, they're still doing it. What a program. Who knows how long they were doing it before that. Well, before I go any further, I need to share with you guys what I mean. Well, if you haven't seen my uh, testimony video of uh, Stop what you're doing right now and go and watch that because uh, that'll be the first thing that you will see if you are a brand new visitor to my uh, YouTube channel. I purposely set it up that way just so that you um, can learn why I'm a Christian and what made me uh, passionate about sharing my faith in the first place. Anyway, back to where I was. So, a Christian is someone who dedicates their life to God. Someone who says, God, you're all mine, or I'm all yours. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said that backwards. God, someone that says, God, I'm all yours. I'm, I'm willing to do anything you want me to, to do. You completely own me, not the other way around. Sometimes I get my words tied, you know. So, as a Christian, an unsaved person is a person that lives their life to the way they want to do things. If an unsaved person wants to go out and get drunk, they go out and get drunk. They don't read a Bible or an old book called the Bible and think, well, the Bible says that I shouldn't um, go out and get drunk, but the Bible does say that there's nothing wrong with going out to the bar and getting something to drink. An unsafe person would think that. They would, an unsafe person would just think, oh, I, if I want to go get drunk, I want to go get drunk, no one's going to stop me. An unsafe person doesn't care how much money he spends. Now, this usually applies to Christians, too. I'm not trying to be prejudiced or anything. But I will let you guys know that um, normally an unsafe person will spend as much money as he wants. Now, I am saved, and I will admit that I do spend a lot of money. Though, I do keep in mind that the Bible says that God owns your money. God owns at least 10... I mean, you owe God at least 10% of your money. But God owes, owns all of your money. All of it. Now, you may think that's BS, because I worked hard for that money. How could God own all of my money and the reason why is because he gave it to you in the first place <laughs> and third and finally I will say um, uh, the difference between an unsafe person and a Christian an unsafe person will have sex as many times as he wants before he gets married this isn't always true but an unsafe person whether it's a, he, a female or a male will go out and have sex as many times as they want before they get married. They don't care. And then it's always embarrassing when they actually do meet the right one, if that ever happens, and this is a genuine person. Oh, I'm no longer a virgin. I lost my virginity like 15 years ago. I don't even want to imagine how that would feel. I am 23, and I am still a virgin, and I am going to keep it that way until... I get married, and I don't want to get married until I find the right one. That's why I signed in, uh, one of those abstain things set back in middle school, saying that I would abstain from sex until I get married. So I'm not going to do any sex before marriage. I want to stay a virgin. I want to make my uh, first sexual encounter very, very special. So that's why I personally believe not to uh, do sex before marriage. Now that you understand 
what I'm going to be talking about. Now I can go into faith evangelism. So, back about 12 years ago, I went out with this uh, church. We always uh, got together as a big group, and we would go over the book. We would read over the chapter. We would pray, have something to eat as a snack, and then I would be put into a small group of people. I was with my uh, pastor at the time's group. It was him and a few other people. We would go out in his truck. Sometimes we would even have more than one car that way. Um, we could have one group go out one direction, not the group one direction or the band one direction, and then me and my pastor would go out another direction and go and uh, spread the gospel that way. The worst thing I ever did when I was in faith evangelism was I um, happened to recognize one of my friends. I um, think my pastor would have understood if I had told him, but I decided to keep my mouth shut because I uh, realized that um, it wasn't my place to go and approach a complete stranger door, even though it wasn't a complete stranger to me, it was actually a friend of my mom's, because uh, this father's uh, daughter was going to the school at the time. I don't know if his daughter is still going to the school right now, but you never know. You just never know. So that was the first thing that came to my mind, is, oh, I know this person. But normally, I keep my mouth shut. I think I did apologize, and he did forgive me. And I think I did try to explain why I did what I did. And he said, I understand, but you should always let me do the talking. Of course, this was a long time ago. He probably doesn't even remember. But I don't forget things easily. I have a friend that's like that, too. But that's what makes us special, you know? <laughs> In a good way. So, anyway, um... That's basically what we did. We would hang around the church for like an hour, and then we would go out um, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, whatever you want to call it, for the next two hours. And I met some really nice people. We got to go to some really interesting houses uh, in my county, Polk County. And that's another reason why I know so many people because of this program. I, that's just one of the many reasons. I, I can tell you guys so many different uh, discussion topics. I have a lot to tell you guys. Um, not sure if you guys are aware of this, but I'm actually not used to talking to a camera still, despite the fact that um, I did kind of do it back when... I first started YouTube, or joined YouTube back in 2010, May of 2010, and I'm just about to approach my seventh year of being a YouTuber. Actually, the way I used to do YouTube back in the day was I used to do a lot of uh, sitting in front of a laptop with a headset on, doing audio or creating audio files. That's how I used to do a lot of my. Uh, YouTube stuff back then. Unlike the Chim Tracker who's been doing vlogs since 2009. I mean, everybody has to start somewhere. That's just how I felt most comfortable, sitting in front of a laptop with a microphone headset on. You never saw my face that often. So, it's hard for you to imagine how I looked other than the few times you actually did see me. But it wasn't until I really got serious about this whole vlogging thing that I decided to go all the way and get an HD camera. And yeah, it's not as HD as I want it to be, but hey, I don't really want to spend a few hundred dollars on an HD video camera. That's okay. <laughs> I know how to compromise, trust me. I'm a smart cookie. I've been uh, doing this kind of stuff for enough time and I've been watching um, the Tim Tracker and a few other guys do their YouTube videos and it just gives me ideas of what to do for my YouTube channel. 
But yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed my uh, discussion topic. Uh, I honestly really love faith evangelism. I did it for a few years. I used to do it after school on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. It was a blast. I miss those days very much. It used to be in one of the Sunday school classrooms, by the way, in case I didn't mention that. The biggest one, the room that uh, my parents first met my current pastor right now, when he used to be a Sunday school teacher, see, everybody has to start somewhere. I mean, yes, he's a pastor of a small church, but look at him now. He's gone his way to get doctors or something. And I'm hoping after I get my associates that I'm going to get my bachelor's in uh, Christian studies at the Baptist College of Florida. I am going to go back up next month and uh, attend a gr college graduation. I may or may not vlog while I'm up there, but we'll see. I mean, it's just for a college graduation. I don't necessarily want to post his graduation on YouTube because n none of my YouTubers will know or friends will know who I'm talking about. So if I lose the camera here, oh well, I mean, you guys already got to see the campus. I don't know how badly you guys want to see it again. I'm kind of anxious to go back up. That's just me because I want it, you know. We love the experience that I just relived a month ago. It's already April. I mean, cut good grief. 2017 is already flying, and I've loved every bit of 2017 just as I expected to back in uh, January. I mean, look at next month. I graduated from Polk State College. My brother graduates from high school in June. I'm going back up to Canada for a wedding. And who knows what else is going on this year. Uh, I know that next year I'm doing the cruise, finally. And Avatar Land opens in May. And Volcano Bay opens in May. Jimmy Fallon Wright opens this Thursday. That's really exciting. That's probably the biggest thing that's happening this month, other than the fate of the theories coming out. But I see that my time is getting short. Um, or I, I think my time is getting short. Because, um, my video is getting a little long. I can probably guess. Whenever I start talking, I go on and on and on. That's what's nice about having a powerful imagination. So, I'm going to close this video up with saying, always remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I'll see you guys in the next